<laughs> it's called Give It To Me Straight. Yeah. That's the oh the my show. God. <laughs> I just got it. I was like, hold on, why I'm like, why I'm here with Maddie and Latrice looking like upset about her nuts, you know? Give it to me straight. I got it. Okay, got it. Oh, good. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Give It To Me Straight. In a sea of Drag Race content, what's one more show? Joining me on the show today is a very special guest, all the way from right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, Miss <laughs> Alexis Mateo. Bam! Yeah. Hi, Maddie! Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am good. How are you? I'm good. You look just, gorgeous. Thank did you. Did you pick this pageant look because of me? I did. You know, as a pageant girl, you know, I wanted to just try to get, not on your level, but look like... Like at least, like, in look, the top five. At least, yeah. I'll take that. I look like I belong in the same building, <laughs> building at least. <laughs> You're not trying to be the winner. You're just yeah. trying to crack the coat. You look good, bitch. Thank you. I like that. I like that. You Thank look good. You. <laughs> She's great. getting Miss Congeniality tonight. <laughs> I can't. No more pleasantries. We're going to get into these hard-hitting questions. Oh, no. I, I hate that. Can I say skip? Skip? Like, if I don't like the question, can I say skip? You can, but I'm going to peer pressure you into saying it anyway. Okay. Nothing's bad. You know? I can say skip, and you can keep asking the same question. Yeah. We'll have, like, 30 minutes of yeah. me saying skip. Well, <laughs> you'll, you'll answer enough questions where I can take certain words and just piece together and answer. <laughs> so, Very yeah. Ooh. I had, yeah, I had done a t several TV shows where yeah. they had done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you started drag in 2006. Uh-huh. Yeah. I was, I was only 12 years old. Well, I actually started drag in 2000, but I did it full time in 2006. Oh, you so know? you've been dressing up for a minute. Yeah. Um, as soon as I moved to Orlando from Puerto Rico in 2000, I started doing talent shows. Mm -hmm. It was like bad drag. <laughs> Were you doing drag at drag places or just doing drag in No, I did it. Um, well, I used to work at Disney and we were always running late for the rent. So we discovered that Parliament House in Orlando used to have a talent show every Tuesday for $100. <laughs> it was <laughs> salvation for some of us. But um, it was not until like 2006 that I took it serious because I finally got um, an audition to be a cast member in a hotel called the Sun Coast Resort in St. Pete. It was like serious then. Yeah. 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 Like no more playing dress up. Yeah. No, like it was no more rent due or no more like talent shows. <laughs> this was like... Job, W-2 forms. <laughs> 1099. 1099. Yeah. Very bad. Yeah. You actually filed your taxes for your drag? Hell yeah. Oh my gosh. No. You don't? I mean, I do now, but not whenever I was a local girl. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, it's tax season. You never know. Mm -hmm. We'll see Maddie somewhere behind the bars. <laughs> <laughs> like some of our sisters, but we're not going to say that. <laughs> Just like you, I'm also an award-winning designer. Yes. And you won the 2001 Inner Fashion Award for Best Fashion Designer. Yes. Did you all make this? No. Oh. Everything that is pretty, I didn't make. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. No, um, when I was in college, you know, I went to college in Puerto Rico for two different things that I don't know why I choose them. But um, between that, I decided that I was going to try everything that I wanted to try because, of course, I was never allowed to do these things when I was a young boy at home, mm -hmm. um, thanks to religion. So I started my dance classes. I wanted to become my designer. And it was a lot of people there. I remember I didn't have a clue. Some of my stuff didn't have zippers. And I ended up winning. It was awesome. But it, it didn't do you too well, though, because just like me, you also lost every ball challenge that you competed in. That's a lie. You did? Though. That's a lie. You were in the bottom. There were, I was in the bottom, but it was not fair. Especially on All Stars 5. I mean, come on, let's be honest. Everybody else have a stretch to dress on. I was the only one that did a full gown, bell bottom trumpet with an inflatable pool. I mean, come on. It's just like the uh, design competition that you actually won. It's, it's what did the judges say, though? And it's what you the know, judges say, yeah. But the they saw the it, day. though. They saw it. They were like, okay, this little queen has something special. Mm -hmm. And drag race, they say, this little queen has something special. Let's get her out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very that. It was very that. Alexis Persona had never been a drag model. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't feel like I'm in a, I belong in the wrong way. I'm a plus girl, things like that. I have mm -hmm. never been in my mind. What I have been in my mind is the element of costume. I like to be dressed. I don't want people to say, oh my God, you look like you be belong in the cover of a magazine. I want people to say, 
damn, that girl belongs in a circus. <laughs> it's seriously show business here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like everything that has to do with sparkles, sequins, um, stage elements, over the top stuff. Yeah. If it's about that, yeah, I don't have a clue about fashion. But if it's about Drag. stage, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Always. And it did not help that I work at Disney World. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, no. Magic and, everywhere. Baby, it's it was magic. like, it was 24 hours in front of me, you know? Mm -hmm. I did I did several characters, and I was in several of the, uh, parades, including the Electrical Magic Parade. And I was just in love about how beautiful my tuxedo lights up, you know? Mm -hmm. like <laughs> It was awesome. So, yeah, all that stuff just made me fall in love with drag. Period. That's beautiful. Don't cry, bitch. Straight men don't cry. It, 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 Straight men don't have feelings. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too off-brand for me. I, I, don't, I don't do that. <laughs> I cannot. Um, so it's not always sunshine and rainbows. Mm -mm. A few years back, your Instagram was hacked and deleted. Oh, my God. You ended God. up losing over 90,000 followers. Yes. How traumatizing was that? In it the was moment. horrible. Um, I'm a girl who started social media with MySpace. Mm -hmm. And that's all I knew back then. Yeah. When I was on Drag Race season three, we were so excited to update our MySpace picture. You know, mm -hmm. like we were so excited about that. <laughs> Whenever people clicked on your profile and it played the song, was your song whatever you were lip syncing recently? <laughs> was that how you did it? Very bad. Yeah. Very, very bad. Y'all know, y'all know, whoever had MySpace, you know, we used to dedicate our wall to whatever was happening in that moment in our life. So those was the top 10 friends. So yeah, I kind of like had to grow out of there. It was obligate, like I was obligated to move to Facebook world. Yeah. So when we went to Instagram, I was starting Instagram on All Stars 1 and um, in me, it was okay. Mm -hmm. I was starting to like get it. Um, followers were starting to go up and then Ooh. shut down. Yeah. I will say though, like, you definitely made a bounce back because like I was on the most recent season and yeah. I'm, I'm pulling about like about a quarter mil, but like you're almost like half a million. You got over 400 But people like me better. I was, no! I was building up to a compliment about how people love you, and you took it people from me. People love me, and I love them. Yeah. It's a beautiful relationship. How sad that you can have it, Maddie. No, um, I'm, I was very lucky. I, I have to say that. I don't even know how this happened, but I, I did um, pull out at least a decent amount, and I'm very happy with it. I still don't get Instagram, mm -hmm. and now we added TikTok on top of all this. Yeah. Um, it's just crazy to me. Well, I, I don't think you understand anything technological because you also had your Venmo deleted. Uh-huh. Yeah. Several times. <laughs> Did you ever get your money back from Venmo? Yes. Oh, that's good at least. Yes, and I already have a new account. What was your password? Was your password password? Is that why <laughs> One, two, three. Your password one, two, three. So <laughs> I just get it. No, I don't know. It was just so weird stuff. Okay, a lot of us had management co um, companies, and back in the day, it was not as popular as us now. Mm -hmm. So some of the management company took advantage of us and played with our money. <laughs> you won a lot of pageants. Yes. You are, like, you are a pageant girly through and through. Uh, your drag mom is actually Coco Montrese. Mm -hmm. She got you into your first pageant, much to your chagrin. It was not, uh, did not go as well as you had planned, but <laughs> you did go on to win a lot of pageants. We're just gonna put a list of them here. Not to let those scroll on by. <laughs> what would you say your key to success is winning pageants? I wanted to win. That's the biggest success. Like you, if you ever want to do something in life, just not wish for it. Just work hard for it. So did you not want to win Drag Race? <laughs> I didn't need to. Oh, I'm a fucking legend, bitch. You didn't need to. <laughs> no, um, you know what it is? Okay, pageantry and drag race is two different things. Because even though it's a televised pageant, mm -hmm. you also play on favoritism. And the girls are judged individually in a different level. Maybe because I am an older girl and they know I'm, I did pageants and stuff like that. The critiques are a little harder with me than probably with a newcomer would not be and they, we just stand in there at the same level. On a pageant circuit, everybody's on the same level in a competition, and the judges are looking exactly for the same things, and um, it's a little bit more fair when it comes to judging, I would say. Even though we still have pageants that are fixed and favoritism and things like that, I think we can follow 
a pattern of mm -hmm. how to win a contest. And you never can with Drag Race. Because they fair. switch things around, you know yeah, what I mean? That's fair. Do you think you would have won All Stars if it wasn't for India Farah? <laughs> the India drama. Mm -hmm. I feel I would have a big chance, at least a fair chance, mm -hmm. to see if I could have won. Because I went home right after India just because the girls, of course, they were like, we're not going to send Alexis home because we know she didn't do it, but we're going to use it as an advantage for the next episode of Send Her Home. So um, I feel like I would have stayed. I think I would have done an amazing job in the stand-up comedy. I know what I was going to wear, and I know I would have slayed, probably win the challenge, send one of the fame favorite homes and make it to the top three. And I know I can sing, I can dance. I would have turned the video, and I'm a good lip singer. You never know. Uh, Things would have gone a different way. My problem with India was the fact that she didn't uh, accept that she did a great job. Because I feel like India did a great job. She did what she needed to do. She came back. She cleaned herself. She exposed herself. She was doing a great job. She didn't have to play dirty, though. You know what I mean? You did great, India. But you're a liar. And that's why Alexis didn't <laughs> like you. <laughs> I, I release her, baby. I sleep great at night. I don't have to think about these things, but I do. I feel like I was cheated on this one. Speak your piece. Speak. <laughs> you keep turning the face. <laughs> Get the nuts away from my face, girl. Would you go back to All Stars? Hell yeah, as long as they pay me, shit, yes. <laughs> That's like going back to work every day. As long as the check is still clear as we go. Um, okay, I would love to go back to an All Stars versus the world format mm. better than yeah. A regular All Stars, like a Canada versus the world, yeah, something or like that, like Puerto Rico versus the Edge, something, some uh -huh, something, something really easy that I can win. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I honestly feel like I should have won a crown. I always see myself as a great representative, not just for the drag community, but for Drag Race, and I just feel like I should have won something. Yeah, and pr uh, plus, I look so pretty with a crown on. You know? Well, you've had plenty of practice. You've had many a crown. Yeah, so I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. Y'all Google promo pictures for Alexis pageants. You know I was going to be good. Yeah. yeah. So you were on season three. You actually auditioned for season one and two. Mm -hmm. What do you think you did? What do you think went wrong with the first two auditions? What did you do differently the third time? Okay. The first time that I auditioned for Drag Race was not an audition. It was a voting contest online mm -hmm. for the girls. So... I finally made it to the top 20, and that's when I actually was like, oh my God, people really like me, so let me just go ahead and audition. I auditioned for second uh, to the second season, um, and I went to the mental evaluation and everything, and I didn't get it. But um, season three, as soon as they sent me an email about auditioning, I was like, I'm gonna get this one. And I kinda like did it differently than the second one. Um, I was just so used to pageants, so I was like, Good evening, ladies, gentlemen. It's like a very proper situation. But now, um, as soon as second, third, third season happened, I was like, this is going to be me. I started the video saying, you know, RuPaul, if you don't put me in this fucking show, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> very bad. So I got it. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Season three. And I, I was so happy that season three was, like, happening. Like, I feel like season three was the jump to the start room. Like, we had the budget. We have... You know, we got commercials, yeah. designers for our commercial. <laughs> like, it was good, girl. Yeah. That's, this is when I, I figured out that it was not going to be just a little logo production. Yeah. Let's just like, put it that way. Season three, they had a budget. It wasn't uh -huh. the budget, but it was a budget. Yeah. For sure. And we went up in the uh, price package, too. Uh huh. You're obviously doing something right with the audition taste because not only did you get yourself on, you also did Alyssa Edwards' audition video. Mm -hmm. Do you think Alyssa Edwards would have made it on the drag race if not without you? <laughs> <laughs> Will you take so She actually auditioned before I did her audition tape and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. I actually flew to Dallas, Texas to help her with the audition tape. We did we did the audition tape like several times. As as me, she was a pageant girl, so we we got a certain different way to do things. So um I was glad she did. I was I was so excited about that. Then I already knew that my friend Coco Montreux was going mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my god, this is going to be so good. Drama. Oh, yes. See, yeah. Oh, yes. Wait, I was going so to call all the producers and gave them all the tea. You knew whenever like, she was going on that they were both on. Did oh, you, yeah. Or you knew that Coco was going at least. Yeah. Did, did they know that each other no. was going to be on? Oh, so no. You and like, I didn't say it because like, it affects the reality of things. Mm -hmm. You know? 
they will have time to prepare themselves and all that. Yeah. And I was like, no. You just set your friend up. <laughs> yes, yeah. why not? I sacrificed my friends in order of having good TV for my own yeah. self. And that's why you keep coming back for All Stars because you support the brand and you're there for the franchise. The franchise comes first. Uh, always, always. always. Yeah. <laughs> I live. So, originally from Puerto Rico, you moved to Orlando. When did you move to Vegas? I moved to Vegas in 2000. Pandemic the year. With the pandemic, you really only have been performing here for about maybe two years or so. Yeah. But you've already become like such like a staple. You have shows at Piranha, you're in Jag Race Live, you have your own brunches. How did you like spread your seed so quickly <laughs> in Vegas? I got no clue. No. Honestly, I'm just so blessed. Vegas is awesome. Vegas is like everybody comes to Vegas at least once a year. Yeah. So I get to see a lot of people that I haven't seen in years just stopping here. And it's so much cheaper. Like whenever I got when I got on Drag Race, everyone was just like, "Oh, you're gonna move to LA. She's gonna be an LA girly." Yeah, yeah it's so expensive. Yeah, I never Vegas. did. It is so close to LA. You yeah. know, it's, we can just drive yeah. there. The water I, smells funny here too. <laughs> oh my god, it does. Daddy. You notice? I don't smell the water. Did no. you go to the bathroom? And... <sighs> Every time I turn the shower on, hopefully it's not just my water. It's just probably your water. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> my smells delicious. It does. <laughs> You're performing in Vegas, doing all the stuff here. Do you have any like long-term goals or pageants or anything up next? Or are you I, just kind of feeling your way through it? Um, the big wave of Drag Race just started um, after my seasons were on and All Stars 5 aired through a pandemic situation. I never get a chance to do like big tours and travel to like different countries. Mm -hmm. So I really want to do those things before I can do anything else. I would like to continue producing music. I love doing music, especially in Spanish. And I would love to have a great TV show. Cool. I've always been trying to get on a franchise of Drag Race <laughs> and host it in Spanish. These bitches cannot mm -hmm. come out with something. Yeah, I was yeah. a judge in Drag Race España, and I loved it. That's why, that's why it's intriguing me yeah. that I could be a good host. I know, I know Puerto Rico is technically part of the U.S., but uh -huh. I feel like there's so many Puerto Rican queens, and they're not given a fair shot on the U.S. seasons. I feel like <laughs> Drag Race Puerto Rico could honestly be its own thing at this yes, point. Yes, especially because even though we're part of United States, our first language is not American. So, you know, English is not the best skill that we have. Mm -hmm. So, yes. I mean, Mexico can have... Mexico has its little, though. So if they can have a franchise, yeah. so is Puerto Rico or... Mexico has, like, multiple franchises. Yeah. I mean, they obviously have, they have a lot of drag They have general, drag races like Mama, like drag and race a spin-off yeah. everywhere. They're all... Like La Mastragas, Drag Race Mexico. Like, they got plenty of, like, drag shows. Yeah. So Puerto Rico can have a little something. Why right. Not? Why not? Like, why not? Dragula in Espanol. Dragula in Espanol. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. You'll be the host with, like, white contacts. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I'm feeling it already. Uh, Como se dice hello uglies in Espanol? Marimorphosis. <laughs> wow. Just walked into that. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> Get um, those nuts away from my face, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, you're here in Vegas right now. You're doing a lot of amazing stuff. And you are a long way from Tigger. So a lot of people don't know this. Before, <laughs> before Drag Race. I hate to. Whenever you got a call for Drag Race, you were working at Disney as, like, the character. And I think you said you were working, like, Tigger was, like, your main one you were doing. Uh -huh. Can you give us a little uh -huh. Tigger right now? Not a Tigger. You don't give Tigger. First of all, that's copywriter. Second, if I do it in this video, I get sued. And third, I'm, I didn't do Tigger. I was friends with Tigger. The Disney NDA is much stronger than the Drag Race NDA. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, no, Tigger and um, all the other characters. Um, I feel like Disney was a school. It's literally like a school for me. I learned so much about makeup, hair, acting, dancing at Disney. Um, I learned a lot of my English from Disney. So, yes was awesome. Good place to work. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. It's, it's about the memories. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's about the memories of how hot Florida is in summertime mm -hmm. um, and humid 
And you're wearing all those costumes. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just like drag. You're in a you're in an outfit, you're burning up, you're uncomfortable, people keep wanting pictures. Yes. But the memories. So oh my um, God. Speaking of memories, your time on Drag Race, you created a lot of memories for a lot of other people with your signature catchphrases. And I feel like season three had some of your most iconic catchphrases, most of them being in a single episode, yeah. where you had such catchphrases as... Sick me no. <laughs> and also... Only an American a woman like me have a freaking chorizo! And my <laughs> personal favorite... Even if I was born on the moon, I will still be in America. <laughs> But of course, Ooh. like probably your most famous one and the one that people reference the most is of course Bam! 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 I've only been to a handful of your shows and I have seen people in the audience scream bam at you or ask you to scream it at them. Mm -hmm. It's something people harass you with a lot. <laughs> so right now I'm gonna read you a list of onomatopoeias. I don't know what onomatopoeia is. Onomatopoeia is like awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna read you off some onomatopoeias <clears throat> and give you a chance to create a new catchphrase to replace okay. bam. All right, ready? Yes. I'm just going to show you the to word. To replace BAM? Yeah. Oh, gonna that's going to be bam. a difficult one. Yeah. We're just going to try them out. If something, yeah. if, if it doesn't work, so be it. We yeah, it doesn't matter. Back to BAM, but if something sticks, yeah. who knows? We, we might make history here. Yeah. I'm just going to, sh I'll show you the word. Mm -hmm. And you just say it. You don't have to say it as it's written. Just say it how you, f how, how it feels correct. Uh-huh. Ready? <laughs> Pow. Okay. <laughs> Simple enough. You could use a little more pizzazz, but it's fine. Mm-hmm. That was very easy though, because that one is like bam. What the fuck is that? Whoosh. Whoosh. <laughs> do, do you know my reading in English is not my strongest yeah, you too, go right? Like, whoosh. Or like how what? whoosh. <laughs> Those are not even catchphrases. Those are words. Bam isn't a catchphrase. But uh, listen, bam, sickening no. Um, all those things, act the fool, and all that. It did not happen. Planning. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know I have a catchphrase into the show air. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I did the commercial that day. It was two minutes to film your commercial. I did it once. Um, Michelle loved it. So I didn't have to do a retake of the commercial. So Rufo was like, go, but just give me whatever. Go crazy. And I started just grabbing stuff from the table and just saying stupid shit. And that's how it happens. The rest of the catchphrases was because I was upset as hell. And for some kind of reason, people think that being Alexis being upset is funny. I don't think so, but they like it. So the whole act of fool, um, Derek don't like you, all that stuff, bitch, I am heated. So some things just resonate with people. Again, yeah. That's why we're just like, trying these Go. out. And again, let's like, do it. Let like me see said, what like, the next The things one. you said were not planned. These aren't planned either. I mean, I planned them. You planned it. It's not gonna work like that. It's how you deliver it. It's spontaneous, you know? Okay, the moment, let me see. Right? Be -be, baby. You see that one is cute. I like yeah. it. Beep beep. Yeah. Beep beep. That's when you scan. Um, when you go and pick up your uh, sister at her house and she's taking out a little long, you put out your hand out of the window and say, beep beep, bitch, I'm waiting. Brumma, <laughs> baby. Brumma. You have to put the baby out of everything because it just it just was born. It's a little flavor, a little spice. It's, it's born. It's a baby. Brumba. I don't even know what is that. <laughs> <laughs> hoink, <laughs> hoink, hoink, hoink. Yeah, if the pen is not writing good, it's running out of ink. You cannot shake it, and you put it down, and you say hoink king to see is, if it works. That is not what I expected That's you not to it say. Is. Oh no, oink. That's the sound a pig makes, like oink. Pigs are not. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> here in America, in Puerto Rico, the pig sounds like. Ring, 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 ring. Yeah, there it is. That's the new catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> this is, is, you know, pigs have their own language too. <laughs> Mayhem Miller, yeah! Mayhem Miller, yeah! <laughs> What's with the M's? He goes like, yeah. Y'all be making like, up. Y'all be making up these words with double it's letters, don't even sound. And this is why I had such a difficulty learning English. All words are made up. Yeah, especially you wrote that shit. Yeah. Go, let me see the next one. <laughs> Ding dong, I know that one. Because I watched Drag Race UK. Hey. Oh, ding dang dong. <laughs> sing, sing, song. Ding dang dong. <laughs> UK, huh? 
This queen is back in the UK again with amazing beauty and intelligent like Queen Elizabeth. I came to reign that way to stop and it wasn't in vain. Sickly no, and I'm full of charm. I'm a sickly lady. You can call me ma'am. I'm super cool. Never a scam. Twerk, twerk, twerk. Bam! It is something to say. I just, uh, wait, you don't sit at home and made up your own challenge? No. Oh shit, I got issues then. <laughs> Never mind, move on. <laughs> This is why you're like a <laughs> spokesperson for Drag Race at this point. Because you thoroughly enjoy the show. You think about I literally it, you go through it. For real, I literally sit at home and think about what would I have done if I was in that moment on that show. Yeah, versus plans and everything. Yeah. And to be honest with y'all, even though I made all my own stuff, I still haven't even win my own seasons in yeah. here. So I still a process. It's a, it's a learning process. Yeah. And even if you were born on the moon, on the moon. you still be in America. You're not going to let that one go. <laughs> I don't even know why I say that, to be honest. I, I don't think anyone does. But I they don't. literally, the picture throw me a, what it looks like a sausage. Like, I was like, what the fuck is this? It's like, I just going to say something. And they were like, you know you were not born here. I was like, oh yeah, no, even if I was born on the moon. And then I said, oh, they were referring about Puerto Rico. <laughs> but I never see Puerto Rico as a separate situation of uh. America, so I went for the moon. People need to know, okay, the most difficult thing about Drag Race for me and every other person that um, language is not their first language, like Nikki Doll and all the Puerto Rican girls that have been there, is that our brain is like a computer that is programmed in another language. Sometimes it takes us a little longer to literally think and process what they just tell us. But sometimes you don't have enough information to literally translate it like it's supposed to be translated. So we got a lot of mental pictures of random shit. Mm -hmm. What people think is hilarious. Yeah. I well, think it's hilarious, but at the, at the same time it's like, damn, I was so off. <laughs> Well, to be Bring fair, that. you know, with English being your second language, it takes you a second to process, like, what was, like, said to you. Yeah. But America was also processing what you were saying in that challenge. Yeah. We're going through the same struggle in different ways. <laughs> the struggle is it's real. It's just the understanding. The it's just weird. It's just so weird. Because people always go, like, I don't understand how you do so good in the show. I don't understand how you're so funny. Sometimes I'm not just being funny. I just... I don't, I don't know if I'm being funny. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think people just think it's funny. Yeah. If it makes you feel better, I don't think you're being funny. So. I don't think you're that pretty. That's not what you said earlier. <laughs> you look just... gorgeous. You look good, bitch. Thank you. I like that. I like that. You Thank look good. You. <laughs> you don't get to take it back. Baby! Yeah. You gave me a compliment earlier. You're not no, taking you, it back. No, you look amazing. Thank you. This is the best Latrice I ever looked. Is <laughs> that there? Yeah. She's amazing. <laughs> I love you, Latrice. No matter what I say behind your back. Which is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Alexis, what do you have going on? Where can people follow you? What do you have coming up? Let, oh let my know. God. I am in Vegas. I'm planning a lot of tours to Latin America and other places. So follow me on Instagram. Um, if you are looking for information for booking, I'm in Latrice Royale Incorporated. So write us there. Give me a booking, baby. And if you're in Vegas visiting us, me and my sister, Coco Montrese, are producing a brunch at the Art House Theaters. It's every Sunday, and it features some of the most incredible talents like Maddie. Womp, 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 womp. But we are why there. I, why do I get that noise? <laughs> it's, it's, it's fierce. It's fierce. Oh. Maddie Morphison. Womp, 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 womp. Oh, it has it's a good. ring to it. Yeah, it's womp, good. It's womp, good. It's like, womp. like everyone's like, <gasps> oh, it's just Maddie. Yeah, that's cute, that's cute. And then, <laughs> yeah, we're there every Sunday at noon. You can get uh, tickets at fourqueensbyqueens.com and you're not going to regret it because I'm there and I look always pretty. Amazing. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. I know you have to scoot on to your next booking, so thank you for stopping yeah, by. Yeah, I have an, another booking, a fully book. Yeah. I'm not, not, not sitting at home making podcasts. Not, I invited you into my home and you insult me. Oh, you, this is your house? Yes. Oh my God, I thought you were renting this. I was going to say that. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, I'm renting it. But oh, I live here. No way so you were renting it. Well, your, your landlord has a beautiful home. Don't shame me for having a landlord. <laughs> Mine too is rented. I don't know if I to say. I did not want my season. None of them three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next time when we have somebody else. And yeah. Hopefully somebody better. The bar is low. Thank you all so much. <laughs>
<laughs> and we'll see you next time. Hoink! <laughs>